Okay, we learned about definitions of different vessels and uh, different vessels are gonna have the right of way over other vessels, um, sailing vessels, fishing vessels, constrained by draft, etc. cetera. Um, some of these are obvious. I mean, we, when we see a sailing vessel, a sail up, we assume they're under sail and, uh, and we can decide how to deal with it. But other vessels, if they're broken down, we don't really know if they're broken down or we may not always know the status of a vessel. So there's gotta be ways to do it. And we have signals for that. At night, we're gonna use colored lights to uh, tell us what status a vessel is in. We'll also be able to tell which way it's pointed, which way it's facing. So this section is all about those signals. At night, uh, we use lights. During the day, some vessels will show shapes that they'll fly from their rigging uh, so that when we see that shape, we'll know what status they're in. So let's get started. First, we're gonna define uh, specific lights. And the first light we're gonna deal with is something called a masthead light. So a masthead light is a white light placed over the fore and aft center line of a vessel showing over an unbroken light uh, arc over the horizon of 225 degrees. So in the diagram here, you can see it's this white light that's shining forward and off to each side for a full 225 degree sector uh, from all the way to port, all the way to starboard and visible from ahead. So it's a white light um, that we can see for this 225 degree arc. These uh, degree arcs uh, are very specific and very, uh, and you're gonna have to remember those and we'll talk about how to do that. Okay, side lights. Side lights mean a green light on the starboard side, a red light on the port side. Each of these side lights showing an unbroken light of over an arc of the horizon of 112.5 degrees on their respective sides. So we have the green side light on the starboard side visible from straight ahead to 112 and a half degrees off the starboard beam and the port red side light visible from straight ahead to 112 and a half degrees on the port side. <clears throat> Once again, you'll have to remember these and uh, the, de the degrees that they show. Stern light, we already learned about. Stern light is a white light placed, placed nearly as practical at the stern, showing an unbroken light over the horizon of 135 degrees. Um, each of the lights is supposed to have a screen that prevents it from being shown outside of that sector so that we know when we're looking at the stern light, we're, we're back at the stern within that 135 degree sector. And it's not supposed to bleed over where we can see a stern light and a side light at the same time. Um, so uh, anyway, they're going to have these screens. And here's an example of what the screens on a stern light would be. Okay, so you have to remember that. And rather than remembering all the degree sectors of these individual lights, if you just remember that a stern light is visible for 135 degrees, then you can just do a little bit of math on your scratch paper and you can figure out what any of the others are. So we know a circle is 360 degrees, right? So if we remember just the one, a stern light is visible 135 degrees, we just subtract 135 from 360, and that tells us what the arc of visibility is for a masthead light. So, because 225 plus 135 equals our full 360 degrees. So we just remember the one, then we can figure out what a masthead light. And of course, if we know what a masthead light is, we know it's side lights are the masthead light sector split in half, so we just divide 225 degrees by two, and that gives us the degree sectors of each of our side lights. Divide 225 by two, we get 112.5, and there we go. So that's all you need to, re just remember the one. Stern light is 135 degrees, and then just pull out your paper and do a little math. Uh, circle is 360, subtract the stern light from that, and that leaves uh, the masthead. And then we just divide the masthead light in half. That gives us the sectors for the side lights. Okay, so now the rule in the book, and I'm just pointing out because this is the way it says it in the rule. And sometimes you'll see a question about this. The rule says a stern light is visible from 
more than 22 and a half degrees abaft the beam. I don't know why it says that, but that's it says more than 22 and a half degrees abaft the beam. So let's just take a look at that too. The beam means straight out to the side. So from dead ahead to straight out of the side, we know that's a right angle and a right angle, you know, like a square angle, we know a right angle is 90 degrees. So if that's our beam at 90 degrees, when it says the stern light is visible for more than 22 and a half degrees above the beam, it's just adding 22 and a half degrees to that 90. And of course, 90 and 22 and a half is equals 112.5. But it, I just point that out because that's the way the rule says it. And so if you see that, don't get confused. That's just what they're talking about. We have a right angle to the beam straight out and the, the stern light is visible from more than 22 and a half degrees above that beam. So it's back there in that 135 degree sector. Okay, so now we have some other lights that we're gonna define. A flashing light is an all around flashing light that flashes at regular intervals at a frequency of 120 times per minute. So a yellow light can be yellow, like the one I've got on the slide here, but they might also be blue, or they might also be red, depending on what vessels they're being shown on. So a flashing light, particularly, all around, visible for a full 360 degrees, flashing 120 times a minute. Now there's something called a special flashing light. So it's only on inland waters, we'll, we'll see where later. But it's, also, it's a yellow light, only a yellow light, that flashes at regular intervals of a frequency of 50 to 70 times a minute. So it's gonna be flashing about once a second versus the flashing light, which is quick flashing, it's gonna be about twice a second. Special flashing light is only yellow in color, and the definition for the sector of visibility here is it just must be uh, visible from ahead and on either side about the beam. So we see it's similar to the visibility sector of a mass headlight, but it, it isn't required to be specifically be 225 degrees. So flashing light all around 120 times a minute. Special flashing is yellow only, uh, visible from ahead and then about the beam. 50 to 70 times a minute. Okay, let's talk about the lights that are required on power-driven vessels. Power-driven vessels are required to have mast headlights, side lights, and a stern light. And I came up with this table, which kind of shows which uh, sizes of vessels are required to show which lights. So we'll start off with vessels that are 50 meters or greater. And that's at the top of our table. Vessels that are 50 meters or greater are required to have two masthead lights, a stern light, and side lights. So these large vessels, these masthead lights are going to be, one is in, uh, towards the aft the side of the uh, vessel, um, aft masthead light, then there's going to be a forward masthead light, and the heights are very specific. The lower, the forward masthead is always gonna be lower. The aft masthead light is always gonna be higher because these large vessels, we wanna get an idea of what angle they're pointed at. So we have a visible range. And so we know when they're widely spaced, we're maybe looking at the beam, but if they start to you know, line up, then, hey, we might be pretty close to being right in front of them. So large vessels, we want to get an idea of what aspect we're looking at. So they're going to have these two mass headlights, and uh, it's going to give us an idea of which way they're pointed. Of course, they're going to have a white stern light and side lights. Power-driven vessels less than 50 meters just have a single mass headlight. So, but they still have stern light, still have side lights. Okay. Vessels less than 12 meters in length, power-driven vessels less than 12 meters in length, they can combine that white masthead light with their white stern light and do one single all around light that's visible from all angles. And so we see a lot of that, you know, here around town, out in Ock Bay, downtown, you know, our smaller, you know, bay liners, uh, sea sports, uh, you know, all of these smaller boats, we just have one all around white light shining and then we have the two side lights. 
So that's the rule that encompasses those less than 12 meters in length, just a single all around white light that combines both the masthead light and the stern light, uh, but still having separate side lights. Okay, then international only, we have something called a vessel less than seven meters, less than seven knots, so it's a category. And power driven vessels that can, are less than seven meters in length that their maximum speed is seven knots. And otherwise, in other words, they're small and slow. They, instead of having side lights, they can just have an all around white light. International only, less than seven meters, less than seven knots. They can have just an all around white light. As we go through learning lights, we'll kind of notice that if something's low, slow, or going away from us or anchored stationary, all we have is a white light. So it's just uh, typical that it's not moving or it's going away from us, something. Uh, it's just gonna have a single white light and <laughs> bottom line is don't run into the white light. Okay, let's kind of see what this looks like out on our, uh, uh, on our uh, vessels. So here we got our power driven vessel 50 meters or greater. This is our big one that's required to have two mast headlights. So now we can see where those mast headlights are. Aft mast head is higher, forward mast is lower. We got our side lights. The side lights are usually on the side of the wheelhouse. So for a wheelhouse, like on this cargo ship is aft, those side lights are gonna be aft. But if the wheelhouse is forward, like on the ferries or on a cruise ship, uh, you know, most fishing boats, the wheelhouse is forward. Those side lights are on the bridge wings on the sides of the wheelhouse. So we'll see different locations for those side lights. Uh, then we see where the stern light is. And of course, from the stern, we should not be able to see the side lights or the mass headlights. All we should be able to see is that white stern light. So we know at night that we're overtaking. If we can see a side light, then we're up in that sector where we're in a crossing situation. Okay, power driven vessels less than 50 meters in length, just a single mast headlight. Where best seen, we got our side lights once again, stern light once again, power driven vessels less than 50 meters. Here's our uh, smaller, less than 12 meter power driven vessel, all around white light and side lights. Here's our power driven vessel, international only, less than seven meters, less than seven knots, only required to have a white all around light. So that's power driven vessels. Okay, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, there's gonna be some differences on, on uh, inland rest and rivers and one on the Great Lakes. Here's the difference on the Great Lakes. So this will be the only thing specific you have to learn about lighting on the Great Lakes. Power driven vessels, 50 meters or greater on the Great Lakes, they can combine their after mast headlight with their stern light into one all around white light. So they're just combining their after mast head with their stern light to an all around white light. Still have a forward mast head, still have side lights. Okay, here's something called the air cushion vessel. The air cushion vessel is has fans, you know, that blow straight down, and then the lifts the boat up onto the water, so it's floating on a cushion of air. And generally, they go pretty fast. Uh, can even run up on the shore. Air cushion vessel in the non-displacement mode when it's up on its cushion. In addition to the lights for a power-driven vessel, shows a flashing yellow light. Remember the definition of flashing a light is visible for 360 degrees and uh, flashing 120 times a minute. So a flashing yellow light on an air cushion vessel. Here's that weird wing and ground craft that I mentioned before. So it's kind of like a seaplane, but it actually cannot lift up any higher than what we call ground effect. So ground effect comes off underneath the wings, lifts it up, but it can't fly any higher than that, like a seaplane can, a float plane. Uh, so it just cruises along on its air cushion, or not a cushion, but it, on its ground effect. Um, 
like a plane, looks like a plane, but that's as high as you can get. And so it's called the wing and ground craft. So wing and ground craft show a flashing red light. Once again, flashing light, 120 times a minute, visible for 360 degrees. Wing and ground, flashing red. Here's another artist rendition of a possible wing and ground craft. Uh, they're still pretty rare. Uh, there was uh, plans at one point for actually having one to do a little ferry service between Juno and Haynes. Uh, that was right before the all dot com exploded and uh, that company folded and never came out. Uh, down at the bottom, they're kind of showing like airboat versus what a hovercraft is versus what a wing and ground effect is. So airboat, of course, is just a, has a big fan. You see them you know, run around the Everglades. Uh, there's been one that you know, runs up the Taku here. Uh, the air cushion vessels like the hovercraft, that's in the middle diagram. Uh, there are two in Alaska that I know of. One runs from Coal Bay to King Salmon. Uh, it's a pretty big one. Uh, does a little ferry run between Coal Bay and King Salmon. There's another one that runs on the Kuskokwim River. Uh, but those are the only places. Actually, a couple summers ago, and I don't think they're doing it anymore, Alan Marine was doing airboats up the Taku as well, hover, you know, air cushion vessels. But uh, then the wing and ground craft diagram, they're just trying to show you what that, they, you know, the, wing, the ground effect comes up underneath the wing and it helps to lift it off. <clears throat> okay, there's our submarine. Submarine has the yellow light that flashes three one second flashes followed by a three second off period. So three one second flashes, flash, 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 flash. It's a little slow. And off for three seconds. Morse code for the letter S, submarine. Okay, now we're going to move into sailing vessels. And the rule for sailing vessels is it also includes vessels under oars. Sailing vessels are required to show side lights and a stern light. Okay, what's missing here? that we were looking at on power-driven vessels. Mast headlights. Yeah, so that's the big difference between sailboats and power-driven vessels. Sailboats do not show mast headlights. And at night, if we only see side lights or sternal, uh, it's only see side lights, then we're gonna suspect that it might be a power-driven bus, I mean, a sailboat. Another rule for sailboats, if they are less than 20 meters in length, they can show their side lights and their stern light in the, from a single combined lantern at the top of the mast that just has colored lenses on those various sides. So, you know, it's a single all around light, but on the starboard side, they've got a green lens, port side, they've got a red lens. And then of course it still shows white out the back, but less than 20 meters in length, sailing vessels can show a combined lantern at the top of the mast. Okay, so here's an optional identification light that's available for sailing vessels. Sailing vessels are required to show side lights and a stern light. But if they want to, they can show identification lights of an all around red over an all around green light at the top of the mast. Our memory aid for this is red over green, sailing machine. Red over green, sailing machine. And uh, if they're showing these optional red over green lights at the top of the mast, then their side lights and their stern light have to be down on the hull. They have to be mounted down on the hull. It can't be that small uh, combined lantern at the top of the mast because then it would be confusing from one angle. You might have red, green, red, or green, red, green, or you know red, green, green. So yeah, it'd be get too confusing. So the side lights and, and stern light have to be down uh, on the hull, but red over green, sailing machine. Okay, uh, it includes vessels under oars, uh, rowboats, could be kayaks, could be paddle boards as well. They would fall under this rule. Vessels under oars, which also show side lights and stern lights, but if they don't want to, they at least have to show one white light uh, that can be shown in sufficient time to prevent collision. So the rule says, shall have ready at hand an electric torch or lighted lantern 
which shall be exhibited in sufficient time to prevent collision. Sailboats that are less than seven meters can also fall under this rule. So the smallest sailboats, they also can just have a white light that they can pull out and warn approaching vessels. Okay, that's what uh, sailboats would show at night. During the day, just their sails up is the indication that they're under sail and you treat them like a sailing vessel. However, lots of times sailboats will have their sails up, but their engines will still be on. If their engines are on, they're supposed to show this day shape of a black cone pointed downward so that other vessels will see them and say, they'll see the cone and they'll say, oh, even though their sails are up, they're under power. So I just treat them like another power driven vessel. So if you don't know what a day shape is, so generally it's, um, it'll be like a metal frame with can black canvas stretched around it. It might be a thick, heavy webbing so that, you know, it looks, you can tell the shape is during the day and they have snaps on them. So you could put them on halyards and, and pull them up to the rigging. Uh, but for sailboats, it would be a cone pointed downwards. Think of it as an arrow pointed at the engine saying, hey, I know my sails are up, but my engines are on. So treat me like a power driven vessel. At night, if a sailboat is, has its sails up, but it's under power, it turns on its masthead light. So at night, you wouldn't even see the sails. You just see the masthead light and you know to treat it like a power driven vessel. Okay, now we get to fishing vessels. Okay, fishing vessels, we actually split up into two different lighting configurations. Trawlers have one lighting configuration and all other com uh, commercial fishing vessels have a different one. So we're gonna start off with trawlers. Trawlers will exhibit at night an all around green identification light over an all around white light. So green over white, trawling at night. Here's our memory aid for remembering trawlers. Green over white, trawling at night. If the trawlers are 50 meters or greater, and otherwise, in other words, they're large vessels, and there are a lot of them, the factory processors that are on the Bering Sea, all of them, or not all of them, but most of them are over 50 meters in length. They're going to also, in addition to the green over white, identification lights, they're going to show a masthead light that is aft of and higher. So it's always going to be aft and higher than the green over white trawling at night uh, lights. During the day, they're going to show a day shape of two cones apex together. You can see that on the slide. It kind of looks like an hourglass. Two cones apex together for the day shape is what they would show during the day. There's an example of what the day shape looks like, fishing vessels. If they are making way through the water, fishing vessels will also show side lights and a stern light. So they've got the green over white trawling at night, plus side lights and a stern light. And if they're 50 meters or greater, a white mass headlight aft of and higher than the identification lights. So that's for trawlers. All other fishing vessels show an all around red over an all around white identification light. Our memory aid here, red over white, fishing at night. Red over white, fishing at night. Uh, and here on the slide, I say whether underway or at anchor. So if they're fishing at anchor, um, we haven't learned anchor lights yet, but uh, we will later. Whether they're fishing at anchor or underway fishing, they'll always show red over white fishing at night to show everybody else around them that they are actively fishing. If they're making way through the water, side lights and a stern light. Fishing vessels, red over white fishing at night will during the day also show the same fishing day shape of two cones apex together. On the right side of the slide here, I have another configuration where we have somebody with gear extending more than 150 meters off to one side. An example of this would be like a gill net. Gill net stretching way off. If it's more than 150 meters off to one side, we need to 
more on approaching vessels that there's gear out here and uh, we need to avoid it. So if they've got gear extended more than 150 meters off to one side, they're supposed to have an all around white light on that side at night. During the day, it would be a cone that's pointed upwards. So gear fishing more than 150 meters off to one side, white light on that side, and a cone pointed upwards to warn approaching vessels. Okay, here's our vessel that's not under command. Identification lights for a vessel not under command, red over red, captain's dead. Red over red, captain's dead. Remember, this is our vessel that through not some exceptional circumstance is not able to maneuver as required by the rules. So it's broken down. Sometimes they call these breakdown lights. So you might talk about, hey, I need to raise my breakdown lights or I see a vessel with breakdown lights. These are those lights. Red over red, captain's dead. When it's, when it's not under command, broken down, it would extinguish all other lights. However, if it can still make way, then it would show side lights and a stern light. And that's what we have on the right side of the slide here. Vessel that's not under command, but it's still making way through the water. You might ask, how can that be possible if it's broken down? Well, maybe it lost steering, and but it can still steer by engines. Uh, so they're just still proceeding along slowly. And just one example of what it might be. We don't know what it could be, but if they're making way, side lights and a stern light. The day shape for not under command is two black balls in a vertical line. And I'm going to stop there. Okay, now we're moving on to vessels restricted and ability to maneuver. The identification lights for restricting ability to maneuver are all around red over all around white over all around red. I don't have a fancy rhyme. If you can think of one, let me know. That'd be awesome. Best I could do so far is red wall restricted, red, white, red, red wall restricted. And that's our vessel that's restricting ability to maneuver. Day shapes for a vessel restricted ability to maneuver, black ball, black diamond over a black ball. So ball, diamond, ball, or the shapes that they would show during the day. So our restricted ability maneuver vessels, when they're underway, making way, will show mast headlights, side lights, and a stern light. Uh, at anchor, we'll show just anchor lights. And we haven't learned what those are yet, but we will. We have uh, some other things that we're gonna talk about restricted ability maneuver. Towing vessels, we haven't learned those lights yet, but if a towing vessel decides, the master decides that he is restricted ability to maneuver, in other words, maybe his tow is so large and he's got high winds or heavy weather that it's pulling him off to one side and he has trouble turning in the other direction, he can decide that he's restricted ability to maneuver. Otherwise, a towing vessel is just a power-driven vessel. But if the master decides that he's struggling and he needs help, that he can't maneuver as required by the rules, then he can also put up, in addition to his towing lights, he can put up red, white, red to tell vessels around him that he needs uh, extra privilege uh, that he's having trouble maneuvering. During the day, of course, ball, diamond, ball. Okay, dredges or uh, vessels conducting underwater operations also have some additional lights that they'll show in addition to their red, white, red. So if they have uh, operations where an obstruction exists off to one side, they're gonna mark the side where that obstruction exists with two all around red lights. The side that's safe to pass, they're gonna have two all around green lights. So they'll still have the red, white, red, red while restricted, but the obstructed side, two red lights, side that's safe to pass, two green lights. They're also during the day going to have day shapes to mark that. The obstructed side is going to be two black balls. Uh, remember two black balls before was not under command, kind of a warning, a bad one. Yeah, black balls are bad when you start getting more than one 
And uh, so that's going to be a side that's obstructed. Diamonds are on the good side. We like diamonds. Diamonds are on the good side that's safe to pass. Dredge pipelines. If there's a floating dredge pipeline, sometimes they're using vacuums to suck uh, sand and pebbles and, and gravel and stuff off the bottom. And then they pump that through a pipeline over to a barge or to a dredge spoil area somewhere. If they have a floating pipeline like that, they need to mark it at night so vessels don't run into it. It's supposed to be marked with flashing yellow uh, lights that are flashing 50 to 70 times a minute. If there's a gap in the pipeline where maybe it dips down enough that vessels can safely pass through, that gap in the pipeline, that opening, will be marked with two vertical red lights. So you can, are able to drive in between the two vertical red lights or dredge pipeline. Okay, specifically diving operations, they're included under restricted ability maneuver. Uh, they're gonna show at night, red, white, red, but no anchor light. So that's the difference between other vessels restricted ability maneuver and vessels conducting underwater operations. It'd be just red, white, red at night. The day shape for diving operations is the alpha flag. The alpha flag is this flag I've got down here. It's a white and blue uh, pennant style flag uh, for diving operations. You might ask, hey, what about the red diving flag? That's, that's more an industry flag. This is the internationally recognized day shape for diving operations. Okay, another vessel that falls under the restricted ability maneuver is something called the minesweeper. So naval vessels that go out and uh, they clear um, naval mines, you know, the explosives that they might, that uh, countries might put out there to guard their harbors or, or to blockade somebody else's harbor. So these mine, minesweepers go through to clean those out. They have identification lights of three all around green lights that are arranged, at one at the mast and then all around green at each end of the yard arm. Kind of a triangular shape. One at the mast and then one out on the end of each yard arm. Uh, we say our memory aid for this one is green times three, flee. Uh, so stay out of there, stay a thousand meters away. Green times three, flee. During the day, three black balls arranged in the same uh, pattern as the green lights. Black ball on the mast, black ball into the end of each yard arm. In addition to the identification of lights, um, lights for a power driven vessel of its size. Vessel constrained by draft, all around red, all around red, all around red, 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 rudder rubbing rocks. That's our memory aid for this. So it's a deep draft vessel. So it's rudder isn't really bouncing along the rocks down there, but that's just our memory aid. It's a deep draft vessel. that's going in a shallow channel, red, 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 rudder rubbing rocks for a vessel constrained by draft. Remember, constrained by draft is only defined in international rules, power driven vessels only, uh, but there's our deep draft vessel going through another channel. In addition to red, 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 of course, it's going to have lights for a power driven vessel, mast headlight, side light, stern light. The day shape for constrained by draft is a black cylinder. So we see the black cylinder in the lower left. Uh, you can think of it as an air oil barrel, like a big tanker with an oil barrel, or you can think of draft beer keg, constrained by draft, draft beer keg, whatever memory aid works for you, black cylinder for constrained by draft. Pilot vessel, show an all identification light of all around white over all around red, white over red, pilot ahead, white over red, pilot ahead. When it's underway, side lights and a stern light. If it's working at anchor, we'll show anchor lights. So white over red, pilot ahead. Pilot vessels are, of course, the, the boats that run the pilots out to the cruise ships or the other big uh, vessels before the inner harbor. Uh, during the day, they're just going to have pilot painted on the side in big letters, big bold letters, pilot. White over red, pilot ahead. And that takes us up to towing, and I'm going to do a separate presentation for towing. 
uh, because there's a lot of uh, idiosyncrasies there. And uh, this will be enough for the first section. 